Right. All right. Great. You All um right. you want to call it to or does select board go first or you first, Denise? I never remember. Um, I don't know. Well, you usually read the blah blah blah, then the select board opens. Okay. Well, Trevor is not uh he's gonna be late because he's picking up his son uh, okay. from school. So um <laughs> All right, and I don't and I don't have the blurb in front of me, but right, I will, I'll, I'll read, this. No, no, I'll read this, uh, and then we'll do that. Okay, okay. meetings <laughs> normally uh, held at municipal offices are being held remotely with adequate alternative means of public access, and where required public participation provided in accordance with Chapter mm -hmm. 107 of the Acts of 2022, which extended the governor's March 12, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, master one laws, Chapter 30A, Section 20, until March 31st, 2023. Zoom. Um, Zoom link is on the agenda posted on the town website. Hey, Lily, would the select board like to open the meeting? meeting? Yes, we. the select board would like to open the meeting at 6.35 p.m. Um, uh, tonight on October, I mean, October, September. Uh, I can't even remember what night 15. date. 15. Oh my gosh. It's okay. This week is going by. It's all good. Okay. All right, and we will open our meeting. Let's see. Meeting guidelines. Please speak one at a time. Follow Deerfield Code of Conduct. Be respectful, considerate, courteous, concise, non-repetitive, and please be recognized by the chair by either going like this or raising your hand online. Thanks. All right. Um, let's see. Let's do a roll call. So Jim Cambius. Jim Cambius. You're here. You're here. Okay, Jim is here. Julie Chalfont. Here. Lily. Lily Dwight here. You're here. Tim Hilchy. Here. You're here. Kate Lawless. Here. Is here. Andrea is here. here. I'm here. Trevor is not yet. Darius is not. He's never here. Carolyn here. Yes, I'm here. <laughs> Uh, John, no, John's not here yet. Jennifer's not here yet. Ma, I think I just saw a text from her. They're in. They're still in. Um, She's in Oregon. Oregon. Oh, uh, let's see. Ma, whoops. I'm sorry. Anyway, um, let's see. And Annalie. Here. Here and Satu. No Satu. Okay. Ma. Can't seem to log on to Zoom. I don't know why. Can someone send her? I don't know. Um, why. If you go to the town website and then uh, she can go to the calendar, Who's just tell her to go, go to the website. I, I think Satu said okay. she wasn't going to be able to make it. Who no, didn't? Who said? Satu. Satu. Oh, okay. Town website. Well, you do that texting um why don't i see if people want to approve the minute so we can just keep, get to andrea yep. Yep. okay I, I texted that so oh, all right okay andrea. um she's has, fat. has everyone had a chance to look at the minutes if so are there any um additions corrections if not, i would make a motion to um, approve the minutes as presented all right i second that motion all right all in favor okay great minutes approved Wonderful. All right, we're going to go on to reports. And first one is Andrew Leibson. Thank you for accommodating me. Um, the We had a meeting on Tuesday and we made um, incredible progress. We're at the um, action plan section at this point. And a lot of the action plan, big old table, assigns it has areas where we think things should happen and assigns those to a variety of people and committees. And so we are going to be sharing that with the CCI very soon because CCI will be responsible, components of us um, will be responsible for reviewing it. And we're gonna ask for a very fast turnaround for you to review a couple of weeks. And then we will be able to um, send you the rest of the, the plan. Just so you know, the um, section on the history of Deerfield, which is one small section in one of the other eight sections, is like 2,000 words. Um, so this is going to be a big honking report. 
but we will send you this, this big table, um, section nine, very soon. The um, Allison Gage, who is the FERCOG um, person we have been working with is going to do some edits on it first. And then it's going to be sent out to me, to me and I will, I will make sure that um, everybody from CCI gets it. Just so you know, um, amusingly, at, in the last plan, like for, uh, in 2014, a comment was made about committees should, in town should really be more interactive so that other people know what's going on. So I could say, we're already doing that. We put it on the, um, say the date started was when CCI started. So um, that we're, we're working in the right, in the right direction. Um, a couple of questions that, um, I want you all to think about. I don't really know yet. These may be really questions for the Open Space Committee, but I just want to make sure you know them as well. The contract with Allison Gage goes through the end of the year. I don't know if we want to continue with her, but I'm guessing we probably will because she's going to be making this presentation to the town the 6th of December. We probably will want her to help us with some more things. I. By the time I joined this committee, I, the um, arrangement with her was already completed. So I just don't know um, whether or not there's additional funds that would be requested or, or what's needed. But I just wanted you to know, probably we will want to continue working with her for at least a little while. That was um, important. The other is um, setting priorities. And so we, that's, that we will want some CCI input because, you know, like there's a million things. No, how do we prioritize these things that we want to accomplish? So that's, that is a big question. Um, and then grant money, you know, that, which is the mo a lot of the point of why we are doing this because you can apply for state grant money once you have the plan completed. Anna Lee, do you have a question for me? Um, just a comment in terms of priorities and whatnot, as you were mentioning earlier, you know, that in 2014, there was the piece of, oh, we all should start working together. And here it is 2022 that we're doing it. Um, and I certainly found with planning board, you know, we have this wonderful master plan from 2000. And so accountability almost seems to be more important than, than priorities and how, uh, how can we start building in for all of our plans, not just for this one. How can we start building in some better accountability? Because we have great plans. We have some beautiful plans. Good point. So among, uh, among the things we talked about at, uh, were uh, a lot of things having to do with the rivers, uh, at river access. And mm -hmm. we, you know, things were talked about, well, we should engage the police so we can enforce um, you know, people not using, being in the wrong place, trash, pickup, et cetera. And I just said, boy, enforcement, you know, you can say you want to enforce things. That is really tough. We need to think of another way of thinking about this because we just, the town doesn't have the resources to be doing all of, all of these things. So I think the committee is aware. The other thing that was kind of interesting is that the park, the North Main Street Park was not really included in this. And so that um, is going to be an important part of the, um, of the plan, but that's mostly because I'm, I've been pushing because mostly people are thinking about the rivers and sidewalks and, and um, so making it relevant to exactly what we're trying to do in town currently was a big part of, uh, of what we're doing now. That all makes sense to you? Super. Really? So I have a quick question for you, Andrea. Um, you said that the park was not part of it. I'm betting the campus wasn't either, was it? No. Um, hmm, let me think about. In the open space no, no, yeah. of, the, of the, the center of the campus and um, and I, and I will also just say that um, part of the mandate for senior housing is that we want to um, create something that brings the the outside inside as well. That, that's part of our um, mandate. So anyway, I just thought I, here comes MA. Um, I, I just since you mentioned the park, I was wondering if the campus was in there. Well, I mean, one of the things 
we, de we determined from the survey is that people are really interested in being out in Deerfield doing things, walking, hiking, biking. And so we tried to make sure that those things were very carefully addressed. So among some um, actions that could be taken that I believe wouldn't be too expensive would be to identify with some kind of a sign or plaque, not well-known trails and, um, and places to, um, you know, to bike and, um, and to, especially to hike and to walk. Um, so it's that things are not even identified. People, we did a lot of, did you know about this? Did you know about that? You know, what we were meeting. And so we just want to um, be, you know, make sure you understand that we are really thinking about being outside and being physically active. It's not just, here's a space, but um, you know, the, the park is a, outdoor space, but it's going to have walking trails and that's uh, walking paths we, we were um, concerned about. Um, so it was the campus we, too. So that's and, what- Yes, yes, yes. So I, I'm going to make sure that that gets included. I will, I will, I will take a look at that. So um, Andrea, Andrea, yes. I was just gonna say, I've had a little experience with river issue. You know, we used to have access to the river. I live on Lower Road. And we used to be able to go to Red Rock years ago. It was wonderful. We went there all the time. We collected trash, blah, blah, blah. Great time. Well, new neighbors moved in and they own the acreage that it's on. And at that point, they said, the problem is, is that um, federal law says that you have access to the river. Unfortunately, our state law, as far as I know, says that the person that owns the property owns to the center of the river. So technically you can be on the water, you cannot set foot down in the river, which is a huge pain in the neck. So that's something that you guys need to be aware of. In we, terms we are, of we, one, of the things, one of the things we were talking about was, you know, like uh, a come tuck, um, the whole trail. Yeah. And were, um, was access public the whole way? Or was it not? And so yeah. uh, the comment was made about, we are not going to encourage people to walk on trails that, that intersect with private land. We're mm -hmm. not gonna be able to, um, to, to uh, okay. identify those as, as good places because we know that um, there, are, there are laws and then there are people's concerns about right. their own property and okay. legal well, issues, a variety of sorts. So we, we, we are aware. Okay. To be continued. Okay. Well, thanks. Anybody else have any questions for Andrea? If not, we will release her from her duty so she can go do whatever it is she's doing. Yes. As I, the new grandmother, congratulations. Right. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Nice to see you all. Okay. Thank you for having me. Thank you, Andrea. Okay, see you, Andrea. Bye bye. Thanks. And I see Trevor's on now, and MA made, where's MA? She was here. Just disappeared. Now she's she having audio issues, I think. I know. Poor thing. Well, you know what? I think she's in Oregon, but I think she's camping because she said they were trying to get away from the, the smoke out there. So she's in, yeah, anyway. Okay. So we'll continue. Um, Julie, can you go next? Sure. Um, let's see. Finance committee, we have been working on financial policies and we as a committee have gotten through the whole thing. Um, so I've taken everybody's input. We're gonna do a smooth version. We're gonna review it one more time in our next meeting. And then we will be seeking to come to the select board um, to present them and discuss them. And the goal is to have a set of financial policies that both the finance committee and the select board agree to and everybody will sign them and then we'll have financial policies. Um, so we're quite close on that, I think pending select board input. Um, we have been looking, we got a presentation on debt last at our last meeting and looked at outstanding debt and upcoming debt. And we are um, thinking through ways to present the information um, sort of both comprehensively and understandably to people who don't look at it every couple of weeks and think about it and talk about it all the time. So um, that's something else that we're working on and working towards. Um, and then upcoming meetings, we will be um, reviewing the, um, 
warrant articles in preparation for um, the special town meeting as soon as those are available to be reviewed and discussed. Um, then I think that's probably it for finance committee. Um, town building advisory committee, um, the, the, we had an RFQ for a designer architect engineering firm for the 1888 building. Those bids were due yesterday. We got nine bids. Um, we had like a huge turnout to the presentation. Um, so we should, the, the members of the committee should be getting those packages, um, I hope before this weekend. So we'll have time to review them. And then Monday evening, the committee is meeting to review those packages, select at least three that we will then interview. Um, and I think interviews will probably be on Thursday, although we don't have a time set yet. Mm -hmm. um, and then we will have a designer. So that is moving forward also. Hmm. It's only two things. The first thing is I think neither Tim nor I will be able to meet it yeah. to meet Monday because we've got an, an executive session, although I'd really like to see them. So it's possible for us to see them and to give, you know, give our opinion on that, you know, prior sure. to that meeting. Yep. Okay. That would be great. Uh, and so I asked, I, I'm saying yes, like with all this confidence, I don't have the packages. Yeah, so right. I asked Dan to put the packages in town hall so we could all mm -hmm. go by and pick up our, and have them labeled like with all our names. Um, but I haven't actually heard back from him yet. So I'm assuming that that's going to happen, but I don't know when. So I will reach out to him. He's, I just haven't called him yet. He's very okay. responsive when you call, but yeah. I haven't called yet. Um, if it's possible, could you just let us know, just you know, yeah, text yeah. me or something, and they'll stop by. Absolutely. Company. And the second thing is that I did, I was listening to the finance committee meeting, but two finance committee meetings before, I was so happy to hear both you and Jim gave such great reports on CCI, and I really appreciate that, that you're letting everyone know, and I'm really hoping that everybody here, which I keep telling every single time, go back and tell everybody what we're doing on CCI so we can stay as transparent as possible. But it was great. And Jim, you gave a great report, so thank you. That was really good. Okay, any questions for Julie? Nope, okay, just keep doing oh, that. Good Carolyn's work. talking, but she's oh, muted. sorry. Oh. I just wanted to say thank you, Julie, for everything. You're working really hard, and I want you to know it. Yeah, sure. This <laughs> is such a, a shock of change you know, that We've had such, yeah. such a good finance good change. Yeah, I, I really thank you, Julie. Okay, great. It's been a pleasure right. working with you. Next up, Anna Thanks. Lee, our intrepid knitter who's knitting her own sweater. <laughs> it's going to be sweater season soon. Hey. Uh, yeah, the, the planning board for really for a while has been trying to be proactive as well as reactive. Um, so proactively, we are continuing to look at drafting um, new accessory apartment bylaws, really working hard to um, get people from other committees and other sort of uh, staff and consultants and towns um, so that we really feel like we have a good, strong um, uh, bylaw to bring forward. We will probably be bringing it forward in the spring 2023 town meeting. Um, and then also just with thanks to um, Andrea, who's no longer on the meeting, but um, she puts some good, very good work into um, updating our fee schedules for site plan reviews, special permits, et cetera. Our fees hadn't been updated since I think 2014. And so I know in particular, Bob Walden in town is really pleased that we're, and, and we had a comment from one an engineer who was attending the meeting. They're really pleased that we've updated our our uh, updated and simplified our fee schedule. So that's good. Those were a couple of our proactive things that we're moving forward on. Reactively, um, we're continuing to address applications as they come forward. This last week, we had a application for someone to combine two lots into one and we addressed that. And then also one of the things that I think really hopefully worked out well, um, there were some concerns on a, um, on the stormwater management um, construction and plan at Snowberry Court. And um, we did try very hard to listen to 
um, the residents' concerns and ultimately ended up engaging a peer review engineer to examine the plans, examine the, um, what had been built so far, and um, they gave a presentation <clears throat> this last meeting. Um, and certainly there were a lot of residents from Snowberry Court, which I really appreciated. Um, and um, the peer review uh, consultant did say that, um, although there had been some changes, that the changes um, seemed to make sense with the type of um, stormwater that appears to be needed to be managed and, um, and basically sort of hopefully put some of the um, concerns to rest for the residents of Snowberry Court. So um, at least I mean, I feel good that um, the planning board in the town um, helped, you know, step up to listen to residents and try to get a third party independent consultant to review the thing. So onward. Yes. Thank you, Annalie. Okay. Yes, none of the changes rose to the level of needing an amendment according to both engineers. So we are good to go. Thank you. Yeah. You've got 60 days. We'll have another meeting and hopefully put yeah. it, put it to rest. Thanks. Yay, Thanks. MA. <laughs> okay. Speaking of MA, while you're here, why don't you give your report? Why don't you unmute? She can't. You can't unmute? What? Okay. Well, well I no doubt she updated her committee report in the drive, so okay. one of us could go read it. Yeah. <laughs> you, are you playing charades sounds like two words first word no okay all right well i i mean i i know what's going on i think with with the report so do you want me just to give it for you okay all right so Emily, i'm sorry so <laughs> emma was working with um i guess we're going to work with UMass, with the students, students from UMass, grad students on a solar planning opportunity. So essentially, they're going to come work with us, with the Energy Committee, and MA is going to be the point person, and they're going to come and do uh, planning for solar. And uh, you know, I understand it may be a little premature, but it's it is another stepping stone to to you know to um, you know renewable energy at the campus. So I don't know if that that's pretty much sums it up, MA. I mean more details online. You can read her report. Lily? When do when do they start? They're supposed to start this semester. <laughs> and will they go all the way through the spring or are they just going till the end of this? They're all the way through okay. the spring. Good. Excellent. Because I've had Good. problems with the other <laughs> happening. Um and um are you all looking at possibly a solar canopy for parking for the campus? Have, is that well, under consideration? Yeah, or everything that, up for that would be part of it. I mean, I think once I start working with the energy committee, we'll talk about what we want to do, some of our thoughts, and then see what their thoughts are. And then also possible a solar canopy over the Lear lot as well. So, you know, we'll see what happens. And then also when Jim gives his report, you know, we can talk about the library and, you know, how that may possibly change to include solar. So, okay. At any rate, so I think it's, it's a good step forward. So thank you for your report, MA. <laughs> okay. Interesting evening here. Okay. All right, um, Trevor. What's, oh. what's happening with the sewer? Hey, so um, so let's see. We had a, a monthly meeting. Um, oh, you know what? I'd like to um, see if I can share this. Uh, oh, I'm disabled. Lily's got her finger up. Looks like she's going to be able to pointing finger up. <laughs> okay, I'm good to go. So uh, let's see. I wanted to see if I could um, share this. So. Um, I just these I don't know if, can everybody see this yep okay so um you know every week I get an update on the on the sewer work and you know I should really share this with everybody in the folder so um you know it just kind of I'll, I'll just scroll down a little bit so you can see some uh, of the pictures um 
you know, our clarifiers coming together. This is that second clarifier. This is the process building, which is up and sheathing is getting on that pretty soon. They're putting the insulation on the, um, you know, over the, over the brick or over the cement blocks. Um, the aeration uh, basin influence structure is, is getting done. This is kind of attached on, on the other side of this building. And uh, the forms are going up for the rest of the clarifier um, process, you know, PVC process water piping in this building is happening. So there's really good stuff uh, going on. So each week I get like kind of what we, what we did and what they're anticipating for the following week. So um, that that's really cool. Um, we are also 68% uh, complete of phase one um, with about 59,000, just under 60,000 of change orders, um, which is really unheard of in, on a large project like that. Uh, we're waiting for Casey to get back. She scooted out on vacation just before we could get her to sign the um, the change order, which is the large, like about $3.9 million change order. We've been working hard with um, USDA and our engineers to try and um, make sure that this was a doable process because normally we would go out to bid and all that. Um, we got a really good price from Waterline. They are already on site. Um, this is to start work on the aeration uh, basins and um, so all of that this is part of phase two that we've actually gotten approval from usda to actually do a uh, a change order instead of um, a, another whole project and they will not jeopardize our grant so that was the main that's the main thing we've been working on and how how do we like we were afraid we'd go ahead with this and they would say oh you've got an extra three million dollars I guess you don't need our grant, you know, because you usually have to spend all the money first and then you can then you can spend down the grant money that comes last. Um, but because we were putting in additional money, we we're afraid that was going to, um, you know, lose our grant and they, they assured us it wouldn't, but they had to do some tricky kind of uh, accounting. So that's pretty good to go. So when Casey gets back, we'll sign that. Um, I think the board has approved it already, but we'll probably just talk it over one last time that's um that's good to go so that'll get working um so everything's really going going well there it's a it's an amazing project um i'd love to maybe do a show and tell sometime to have everybody come down and see what's going on i'd really really like that uh so you could all see what's happening there but the headworks building is coming along um like it really is taking shape there's a lot happening on multiple fronts so it, it's pretty great and um julie meet uh you know comes to the every every monthly meeting which is great too um so we're all kind of on the same page working on that um just uh this weekend sunday uh, sunday carolyn and i uh, stopped over the to the church and um started kind of figuring out what we're going to do and uh we have all this uh board of health kind of covid stuff there goggles and masks and signs and all kinds of junk and which we need to clear it out so i i got four uh shelvings um i assembled those they're up in the front entryway of the of the kind of the ch big church area so we're going to start shuffling stuff over as we can and get time and maybe we could do a volunteer day <laughs> we get a little tr you know bucket train going over to get stuff out of there and then i also met with um with uh, Jennifer uh, Remillard was there on Sunday too, working super hard, and we we spent a couple hours cleaning out the 1888 building, like the, just the hallways and all this old junk. So we she has a dumpster, so we started putting stuff in the dumpster, packing stuff up, getting it ready for the move, and putting stuff out under the tent, which I believe is a free area. So if anybody sees anything, they want to grab. I'm not sure if she's on tonight and did a thing, but so we've been working on that. So we're trying to get a time. Um, pretty quick to kind of get some volunteers together to, to go through and throw out a bunch of stuff. Um, I think Lily has a question. Oh, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I have a question back about the sewer. Sure. Um, I, I remember in town meeting, I'm sure you do too, that people who, uh, most of us who were on septic were going, well, how is this going to help me? And there was talk about yeah. putting in something where we could get our waste dumped and processed. Is that a part of the plan? Because I, I knew- not. It, it's not yet and and so the only re and i'm not opposed to it but it's just the town will have to spend a quite a bit more money to do it i know tim is still interested in kind of making sure see if we can do that it, um the engineers are always happy to do that and design it but it, it it is tricky to do because you have to dilute it and you have to have storage and 
So it's, it's a lot more infrastructure that we have to put in and we haven't put that in yet because it, um, it isn't really related to meeting permit and kind of upgrading our plant. However, okay. if the, if the town wants to do that, um, I just it know. wasn't it hasn't been engineered out. It but has it not been engineered yet. It hasn't nope. been engineered in. Yeah, and I think okay. you know we could also look at that when we start looking at Old Deerfield as well. I mean, one of the two could could do it. Um, mm. Infrastructures we just haven't done it at the we haven't done that yet because every time I ask for it they say sure you can do it. You got a couple million Many bucks. Is enough money, yeah. Exactly. Okay. So, <laughs> but I know it's like one of those things where we're we're starting to discuss bylaws um, and you know uh, town participation. You know we have this twenty five seventy five split, and the board right now and the commissioners are thinking about you know what do we want to get rid of that? How much does um, you know what's the monetary benefit to having a sewer in town and and the collective should some should we pay something right now we pay 25 because that's what was there in 1935 when they started laying pipe it's a different world now usually with an enterprise fund you'd want to have you know the users pick up everything i still think there's some value that the general fund should pay for some what that number is i don't know but anyways so yeah so all right okay for that question. Okay. I'm sorry. So Trevor, you were okay. So, so you need volunteers. So you've got to set the date for volunteers. Yes. Yeah. I'll get back yeah. in touch with Jennifer because she was really needing the help there for the move and everything. Um yeah. because I think they're getting ready to get over there. I know when I talked to her Sunday, she was doing I think Wednesday and Friday. Well, oh, geez, it's already Thursday, right? Is it Thursday? Yes, <laughs> I did the same thing. I'm like, wow, I can't believe it. This week went by. I think tomorrow they plan on the kind of like not doing work. I think they were taking the day because they were doing some training this week. So I think they were planning on doing some stuff on this weekend. Um, okay. But I'll, I'll try to get some dates to get over there and help. Okay, great. Thanks. Thank any you. Other, for me. Yep. Any other questions for Trevor on anything? No. Nope. Okay. I'm going to move on to Kate Wallace. What's happening, Kate? Hi. Well, we uh, the town common committee did have its meeting um, this week on Tuesday. I'll put my report in the Google Doc too. Um, and basically, we, you know, Trevor and I had talked to um, Jeff Squire from Berkshire Design Group. Um, we're kind of in a holding pattern right now because. In order to build out or to make sure the walkways on the common match up with the crosswalks uh, out onto the, the across the streets, we need to know what the plan is uh, about those streets. And those are, you know, many of them are state owned. So we're a little bit, you know, there was a meeting with uh, DOT a while back, but our project was just one of many projects. And um, thanks, Trevor. You're welcome. Um, so uh, on a side note, this was a plan that Jeff and um, Bao Lang, I don't know him, but that's a name I've heard uh, discussed. And it was a way for um, us to achieve kind of traffic calming in conjunction with the common project. However, adding these really nice, you know, amenities to make the streets a little narrower, add a little parking, uh, it, it, it would mean, you know, many thousands, hundreds of thousands of dollars of work, uh, of which we don't have money definitely for from our project, but it could be something that, you know, the town or the state pays for. Basically, Trevor has said, okay, this is great, but where's the money, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so we're kind of hoping that uh, DOT will come back and meet with us again. Um, I know Trevor said Casey was going to try to get them to come back. Um, I guess I feel like right now our committee is kind of like, you know, there to ho hopefully push this along, but we're a little bit, you know, like I, we're not sure what we should be doing. So any recommendations from this group would be welcome. Yes. Well, yeah. Just first of all, we did meet with DOT. It's been a couple of months ago. And, you know, in talking, you know, after the meeting, I, was, I stood there talking with a couple of them. They don't talk to each other. Okay, mm -hmm. I don't know who the guy was, but he was this little guy, the short guy. It's like, 
He said, oh, no one ever invites us out. Well, guess what? Let's invite him back again. I yes. mean, does Casey need to do that or can you guys do yes, that? Casey, Casey was going to do that. And we, they said they were going to go away and come up with ideas, yeah, take well, all of our stuff and then come back and talk to us. But yeah. I, Trevor, I wouldn't count on that. Just, I know. I'd call him back here and say, you know, come on, get with the DOT. You just have to put the pressure on them. Jeez. Yeah. Carolyn? I, I was just going to say, now that we have this little plan, I think we need to invite them back and say, this is what yeah. we've come up with. Um, and then, because remember, I think we need to hold their feet to the fire uh -huh. because they wanted us to send letters of support for that transportation bond bill. Mm -hmm. And then they acted like we hadn't even done anything. Yeah. And it wasn't the agreement for taking over Sugarloaf Street. So now that we got them to agree that we do not have to take over the whole street and that they understand that there is still huge infrastructure issues along that street and that they need to upgrade it if they want any hope of us taking it. But but they would be willing to uh, allow us to have around the common. Mm -hmm. So what we need to do is nail down what exactly is wrong with any infrastructure and what needs to be upgraded in that area and then we're going to follow this plan and they need to put a little bit more money into, you know, next year's program, whatever. Okay. I, I, I just think we need to, we do need to, and we, it was very successful to have Joe and Natalie there. And, and what we need to do is have them come back with DOT. Yeah. Lily. Do we know what is under the streets? Because I will tell you, I climbed into culverts when um, next to uh, the dinosaur shop and stuff and, and was talking to DOT at the time when they were all getting flooded and talking to people about like, where's the water coming from? Where's it going? They had no idea. So I literally took my camera and climbed in and photographed it and shared it. So um, is the first step, and maybe this would be something that Town Common can push for, get a LIDAR and find out what the hell is under there, at least identify pipes or, or thing obstructions. How about that? Just call them, there's things here, there's things there. Well, what, what we're most concerned about is catch basins. We need to have upgraded catch basins oh, for the climate. Carolyn, if you don't know what the conditions of the pipes are, you don't know, there might be um, there might be native burials underneath there. You know, that might be where my ancestor who died at Bloody Brook is buried. I don't know. And I bet nobody does. Uh, Lily, I think they're aware of that. At the meeting, Kevin said that, um, you know, we don't have the equipment to look down far enough and that DOT really has to do that. So that's another reason to get well, that's why I'm saying, here. Like LIDAR is excellent for doing yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. And yes, it is probably. much more easily used now okay. than it was even a few years ago. So, I mean, you wanted an idea. Okay, well, let's yeah. lighter. Let's walk around. So that's that's something that that should be high on the priority list is getting DOT back. It is. Yep. Okay. Yeah. In, in the meantime, before I move on, I'm just going to answer Emma's question. She said, "What about bike paths in North Main?" Emma, that's something that we can look at again under shared streets and spaces. We were going to do that, but instead we did beacons and crosswalks. But that's something we can probably do with FERCOG after we get, I mean, we have this grant, we just need to execute it. Mm -hmm. So as far as I know, that should be that should be coming up pretty soon. Another question for Casey when she gets back, but I think we're good to go on that. So, okay. Yep. Um, next up, um, how about Jim? Okay. Um, I'm wearing, I guess I'm wearing two hats tonight yes, because I'm are. also the only library person here. So um, uh, the library is pushing ahead with um, um, public uh, public information and um, um, about the, uh, the library project uh, in the run up to the town, special town meeting. Um, they have a couple of uh, information tours and Q&A sessions scheduled for next week, one on two on Wednesday, one in the morning and one in the evening. And then a couple more on Saturday, the following Saturday, the 24th. And I believe uh, Joe Comerford is going to be at the two o'clock session on Saturday. If anybody wants to come and, you know, 
grip and grin with her. This is your chance. Um, uh, I do not know the status of the library fundraising. I, uh, Marjorie would have been the person to report on that. Um, I do know that they are, um, they seem to be making good progress, but I do not have any uh, exact numbers. Um, so switching to the um, campus working group meeting that we had on the 12th, um, there's a bunch of, bunch of stuff. Um, let's see, um, uh, Tim uh, talked about the uh, uh, Division of Local Services at the Department of Revenue and their very useful um, um, tax calculator so that you can figure out how much it's gonna cost per household uh, for borrowing a given amount. Um, Ms. Dwight reported about the senior housing survey um, and about using the complete neighborhoods grant for landscaping on the town campus, which I think would include parking, correct? Yeah. Um, um, no, I'll I'll that, was, that was the idea, yes. Yeah. Right. And we have some um, preliminary uh, sketches by the library architect moving, essentially, if we're going to move the library addition to the south side of the building to preserve the trees that are west of it, um, that means that parking would then have to move a little further south uh, uh, onto the church property. Um, you, you were inquiring about solar canopies. I'm not sure that that would be very feasible on the front there, simply because uh, A, it would be aesthetically kind of unfortunate yeah. to have a bunch of solar canopies blocking the view of the church. And also there's just a lot of structures and trees right around there. I'm not sure that we would get much solar energy from that spot, but that's for engineers and, and experts to determine. Um, Julie reported on the 1888 building um, that uh, uh, there's been some asbestos and lead paint found in the 1821 building so that mitigation will have to be done before any work can proceed. Um, uh, let's see. Um, so um, Denise, I sent you an email asking for clarification about the um, the underutilized buildings grant, and you said you would just handle that at this meeting. So why don't you take yeah. that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now. I'll do that. Okay. So is that is that everything? Does anyone have any questions for Jim on that? I I just have some follow up on um, the MMA meeting that I attended on Thursday. Um, I don't have any um, updates, so I'll just if I'll just give my report. There's no updates on MVP because we didn't apply for this round, and then um, capital improvement did not um, meet, and we will probably won't until December. Um, but I did go to the MMA meeting last Thursday, and um, as of last Thursday, there was a hundred and uh, I mean one point five billion dollars still in surplus tax that hasn't been appropriated and 2.2 .2 billion in ARPA funds that have not been appropriated. So, you know, if we keep pushing for that additional money for the libraries because of COVID impact construction costs, we, we, we just got to get it out there. And um, I think because it's across the state, we have a good, you know, we still have opportunity for that. Um, I, I was, there's a hundred million in municipal grants for improvement to local infrastructure, which sounds like a lot of money, a hundred million, but actually, you know, you need millions. So this is probably just a handful of projects, but that doesn't mean that we wouldn't, our project, our campus project wouldn't compete because I think we would. And geographically, they got to give some money out here. So again, you know, opportunity for that. Um, Mass Works is has an additional four hundred million dollars, and so we might be able to get some Mass Works for one of our projects, whatever it is. Um, it's pretty open ended, and they're making the requirements less stringent on what it is. So I was pretty impressed. The only thing that I was disappointed in um, in the budget. This is talking related to budgeting. Um, the climate change um, aspect of it is 
was for the demonstrated communities. There's 10 and they already had 12 applicants and it, you have to do, there's wicked strings attached. So it's not worth it for us to be a demo um, uh, community. And the other stuff was all related to offshore and electric vehicles and all that kind of stuff. Um, so it didn't appear like there's just anything that would support our geothermal project. But, um, you know, the earmark is still alive. So let's just hope that we maybe at some point we'll find out, you know, in November whether our earmark can go forward or not. Carolyn, it would be helpful. So are you going to put this up on the Google Drive? Because if you can, you know, at least share, aside from verbally, because I'm not going to remember all of it, if you can put some of this information, I can start looking at what does that mean for us and searching for grants and then work with okay. Alice. <sighs> Poor Lily. I got I gotta have Lily help me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In the next couple of weeks when I get back. But yeah, okay. that would be helpful because you know, she's currently working. So I'm gonna go to I'm gonna go to can I ask a quick question. Yeah. Oh yeah, Julie, go ahead. When you said the earmark is still alive, is that the hundred thousand that um they're giving us for the no, we, no, we want from... No, we want a $3 million earmark from Jim McGovern. From Jim McGovern, okay. Yeah, and he, he was very committed to that. And I think I think as long, and then we had another earmark of $3 million. $3 million for, on the federal level is kind of like our 200 to 250 on yeah. our state level. Right. So it, it's, it wouldn't be too hard to, for them to give us an earmark of $3 million. And then um, Marky, if we could get Marky and um, Warren to give us $3 million from their earmark. So we potentially, we could get up to $6 million. I wouldn't say, we have to have some basis of it, obviously. Um, and hopefully we'll have a geothermal cost by then. We need to figure out how to get them to do that. Lily, you've got your hand up. Yeah, I actually want to go back to Jim's report because there was one thing that um, we touched on that I feel is really critical and it ties in with the library and that's this concept of doing community outreach. I know it is a drum that I keep beating, but I think it is critical to our success. And so that came up again in our campus uh, master plan working group. Um, especially when we were talking with the library, they are putting together a like real strategy and plan and things like that, which is pretty impressive. Um, and I think we should do no less. And I know I keep saying we should do this and we should do that. Um, but I'm, I'm hoping that, um, that, that we get that, that subcommittee together. And that was something that came up in the campus thing as well. Yeah, no, we we I think we all agree with that, Lily. And I think we we said we'd talk about it now, but at this point in time, you know, with the special town meeting coming up and everything else, I think we I think we should definitely plan on that, but I think we need to have a good plan. So it's gonna take take some time and we do need people to volunteer for that committee. But yeah, I, I agree with that. Jim. Um I had I have on my personal schedule to write up a draft of a sort of a one page summary of the campus plan uh, that I can then circulate among the other members of the working group so that people can put in things that I've forgotten or didn't think mm -hmm. of so that we can at least have something to hand out at the town, special town meeting. Right. Thank you, Jen. Okay. That yeah, that, that, yeah, that would be very helpful. And probably, I mean, the write up that you have, can I just suggest that it's um, very short paragraphs and bulleted form because that's how people receive information these days. People don't read a lot of text. Make it pretty, we'll make it pretty for you, Jim. Okay, uh, Julie? Is there, is the select board planning a date for a briefing before the town meeting? Uh, like public information session, I guess is the proper word. We really weren't on this one because um, we didn't feel that there was a huge number of financial issues, but uh, I mean, we can discuss it on the 21st for sure. I mean, if people feel like they need to. I, I think it'd be helpful to talk about, you know, well, I think Julie was going to talk about kind of our debt, where we're at picture financially, where we're at for mm -hmm. the town, right? And then um, I think that's helpful. And then um, I think there are quite a bit of I mean, that list 
there was a lot of, a lot of there's talent. a long yeah. list of stuff that's potentially on it yeah potentially um, financial so i would love to do it if we could fit it in for sure but i think it's always smart because it yeah it gives people opportunities to see what um you know to get information correctly because mm -hmm. a lot of information is not correct and then also um impact you know what's the impact yep um just just a comment julie it, when you are working on financials i i really i think we should at some point hire some um professionals to help us with the impact of school choice because you know it just is getting worse and worse for us and and uh, you know uh, the cost is just unbelievable and it's complex people don't understand why we aren't like thrilled to death that we um are getting 40 percent you know school choice at the high school and stuff but you know if we're picking up more than 50 percent of the budget we got the money instead of the 5,000 out of the 17,000 that it costs to educate, it wouldn't be a problem, but right. okay. Yeah, so, at okay. some point. I'm so just, that, that's a misnomer though, right? The, <laughs> you can't just put that 5,000 instead of 17,000 because if you got rid of one kid, you wouldn't save $17,000, right? There's a lot of overhead that's there. So right. that 5,000 is supposed to cover the incremental cost of one additional kid. Mm -hmm. And it probably does if, if, if you have a low enough number of school choice kids, mm -hmm. um, it's when you get to the point that you're adding a classroom or adding teachers right. that it no longer pays off. Mm -hmm. um, so there isn't like I, I totally would not advocate getting rid of school choice entirely. Right. right. No. Well, what I'm saying is if it's we been had direction, forever. But so. if we had to, a professional input as to what is the breaking point mm -hmm. for us when we are considering then adding so many more staff mm -hmm. and, and yeah. we yeah. aren't, we yeah. aren't um, paying into OPED, which is a huge long-term debt for the town. Right. Right. Um, and, you know, for us. <laughs> so yep. we, need, we need to have somebody help us to give get that's, the right information. Yeah, well, that's a much longer conversation. I happen to know someone, I'm not gonna name names, someone who's working over there, sort of an aide, and I'll tell you, some of the kids there, this one kid shouldn't be there, period, because I won't even tell you the stuff that happens. I mean, it's really sad. And I understand why they want to keep the child there who is actually more close, closer to an adult because it's cheaper to do that and pay someone to do that instead of shipping them out and paying the transportation cost. But guess what? It's not, it's not the best thing for the school or the child or the person. So that's another big issue. But anyway, that's that, that's beyond our our conversation. But when I'll tell you, when I hear that, it's it, it does not make me happy at all hearing that. So on that note, Lily. <laughs> okay, let me just yeah. jump to my um, senior housing. Um, we have the survey results there in, and we are. Uh, requesting a variety of cross tabulations to do our analysis. Um, very interesting information that, well, not, no surprising, there isn't one person who wants to move into a studio. And there are only like three who are willing to move into a one bedroom. I mean, that's an exaggeration. But um, so it's, uh, and that's not surprising at all. But anyway, um, we don't have the in-depth analysis yet, and we're working on that. The um, market study proposal, which is where you go and look at the demographics, you look at the competing products that are nearby within our market area, and because that demonstrates the need, right? The market study is demand. Um, the market feasibility is the need um, that we are just about to sign the proposal for. Um, not surprisingly, it is more money than it was estimated when we went to the same company to get an estimate last year. And so we have gone to the select board to be to have a warrant article created seeking um, money from uh, free cash or whatever. But at the same time, we are also exploring with um, Stuart Saginor. So then I switched my hats to CPA hat 
because I'm the acting chair of the CPC now, and have reached out to Stuart Saganor to see if we can take the money from the previously allocated $500,000 in the housing reserve fund for town meeting um, and send him the language from the minutes from town meeting 2021 when we specifically moved $209,000 over to the housing trust and also the approval for these other things. So trying to get a little more money, but moving forward on that, um, the request for proposals for the site feasibility. And that's when you get soil analysis, architectural designs, um, bylaw reviews, et cetera. That, um, we have spoken to, thank you, Annalie, um, uh, some some different people, and they all come back to Berkshire Design, which works for us because they certainly know our community, right? So a letter went out today, an email, everything's email, went out today um, with a hmm, hand sketch of mine of the campus and a request for a proposal and a meeting. So we're moving forward on site feasibility, about to sign off on the market study and the survey results are in, but we don't have the analysis yet. Bye, Julie. <laughs> no, bye, Julie. I actually have a quick question. <laughs> okay. I wanna okay. keep hearing, whatever. Um, so the site that you're choosing is the site where the town hall is right now and moving back from that. I just wanna put it out there that I am not enthusiastic about that plan. Um, just like I, I saw something go by that said, oh, CCI all agrees that we can lose that field. It's not a big deal. And I just, uh, CCI is not in agreement on that. <laughs> like, there's at least one member of CCI who is not a big fan of that. Um, I, I, I feel I, like, I, go ahead. I guess what, so is your concern about the ball field? Two concerns. One is the ball field. That mm -hmm. field is used a lot. Um, and with the the trouble that we're having in getting the other field done and as much money as we're putting into the other field, it just seems like if we have a field that's functional, we shouldn't lose it. Um, the other is that, and you guys can all holler at me, but I don't see, I figure out how to put this. Don't take this wrong, okay? <laughs> I think if we build, I think if we build a brand new senior center and extension to town hall and it goes behind the 1888 building, it's going to be a $15 million building and nobody's going to give us $15 million to build that building. And I personally don't support taking out that much debt and increasing our um, taxes to pay for that. So if I go in, like, if I go into it with that mindset, then I see us being able to upgrade town hall and making that a really nice senior center. Mm -hmm. and, and so that, that's my rationale behind it. But I, so I just felt like I needed to get that off my chest, sure, but, um, sure. you know, well, so whatever. So, so the thought that you're going into the site design and the site design, and this is where the site is, and we're not even going to look at anything else. That makes me very uncomfortable. Yeah. Well, so it's site feasibility first mm -hmm. of all, it, to find out if it's feasible, right? And the other thing is that we realized when we did the, when, and you were there, you do the walk around, you take out that that building, the rec building, because the rec mm -hmm. store is going to be up at the park, you get rid yeah. of that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you can shift the ball field and still have your senior housing because there's actually a fair amount of land there. Um, the, the point is to put senior housing in the center of town, which the survey really clearly makes that that point makes that interesting yeah. that that is where people want to live because you can walk to the markets and the bank and stuff like that so yeah i mean there's it, i i take your point um i hope you are wrong about the community senior <laughs> center i i really hope you're wrong because when i look at what's happening in hadley it's amazing um what what we can do for our community but um Anyway, my that's just my thought about the the senior housing and and I will um, defend until death your right to disagree, but I will also fight you to the death. <laughs> well, I don't, yeah, I'll second Julie. I'm not a huge fan of that. 
going to be there. Continued. But, I, to be yeah, continued. Yeah. To be okay. yeah. At this at this point, everything everything is an option. We're not Absolutely. saying we're Absolutely. positively doing yep. anything. Yeah. Yeah. We've got to keep an open mind and not say <laughs> no. You know, okay. So yep. I, th- I just I, want to make sure our mind is still open to other options than and just that. <laughs> yes, and, oh, well, so yeah. if so, this is um, because everything got so much more expensive. We're looking at this site first because it's part of the campus concept, right? And mm-hmm. they might say, "Hey, no, you know what? You're better off taking that 1888 building and connecting it to the church and turning all of that into senior housing and whatever." I don't mm-hmm. know. Um, that's, and they may say it doesn't work. And there is also the property up on Brayburn. There's also the idea that they're doing in Northampton. I've seen a lot where they take um, what uh, the company called Backyard ADUs and they make small houses, not tiny houses, but small houses. And they've built a small house development um, in Northampton sort of a thing. It, so it would be doing lots of little ones of those in order to meet demand. So nothing is nothing is settled. This is the first site feasibility analysis and everything. Right. Okay. Okay. All right. So we're not gonna we're not gonna duke that out tonight. So <laughs> yeah. has been covered. That's okay. But yeah, we welcome okay. every, any input. But. Yeah. Okay, great. So I really do have to go. See you guys later. Okay, bye, Julie. Bye, Julie. Okay, so Tim. So I'm going to give a lot of different little reports. Um, Since Conservation Commission is not represented here, I'm just going to tell you um, a couple of things that are going on there. Um, Conservation Commission and Anna Lee will be interested to know about this um, because the planning board's interest. Pete Law called me and said that he toured Treehouse with um, Mark Studnecki of, I forget which engineering firm it is, who is handling um, the, the, the walkway project. Yeah. And um, when they were toured this facility, a bunch of the erosion controls were removed without permission. Um, <clears throat> they went down to where there was um, the phase 3A plan called for fixing a bridge. Um, As they toured the site, Pete said that he found three other bridges that were never mentioned on the plan and that there was erosion controls that were around those places um, on other parts of the property that were not removed. He's taken photographs, et cetera. And now he wants to um, you know, come to the select board and uh, discuss you know, what we do to find out. Um, the engineer was surprised about these other bridges. So, so that wasn't on my plan. Um, so obviously some, something got lost in the, in the execution phase of this. So they need to, need to come up with a plan to figure out short of an enforcement action, what happens. Um, So that's the Conservation Commission. Um, The Leary lot, we got our appraisal back for the properties that we're interested in discussing with land swap with Hamshaw Lumber. Um, The numbers came in what what appears to me to be good because the the, uh, parcel that the town wants to acquire is a 25 foot strip to allow a connecting um, road between Elm Street and the Leary lot um, and back near Berkshire Brewing. And that's that been valued at $26,000. Um, and that's currently owned by Hamshaw Lumber. There's a piece of land that the town owns, which is larger. It's 5,600 5, square feet, but the appraisal comes in at $10,000. So we have a situation where in a land swap, at least according to these appraisals, the town would be making a $15,000 profit or a $16,000 profit by exchanging these pieces of land. Um, of course, we're not talking about necessarily spending any money, but so that's a good thing because this had to happen before annual fall town meeting and before we can do anything with exchanging these, these pieces of land. So um, that was good news, I think. Um, 
then um, geothermal. Um, Denise and I have been working. Uh, we've sort of fits and starts with uh, FERCOG. Um, at first, FERCOG decided that the, the geothermal um, application that we were looking at wouldn't work because of a 25% requirement. Um, uh, but they were misinterpreting what the 25% requirement was. Um, essentially, it says if you pick five buildings, you have to be able to provide 25% of the HVAC and cooling um, requirements of that five building campus. So we would clearly fit within that. So now FERCOG is back on board with helping us write an application. The engineering firm that I contacted is called GEI Consultants. They're one of the firms that um, had signed on with the Department of Energy to sort of help this pilot project along. And um, the engineer says that if we get a decent application in um, based on the number of applications that have come that he's aware of and the number of potential awards, which is about 20, that we have a good chance of getting the first phase. And that's, correct me if I'm wrong, you know the numbers better than I do. Is it 250,000? 350,000 up to $700,000. The second phase starts at 2.5 million on up. Yeah, and that the first phase is to design, so you, you know, test borings, et cetera, um, and come up with, you know, the load capacities of the, the structures and so forth and, and what you would need to do. And when, if you get approved for that, it doesn't really make sense for them not to give you money for the second phase if your project makes sense and would work. So getting into the first one is really key. So um, we're going to, Denise and I and FERCOG and this, this engineer who's working for free on the application front um, is uh, we're going to try to get this done by October 11th or actually by earlier than that. So, and Denise will be traveling. So um, Julie Chalfont and I think I can't remember. Did I ask you, Lily? You know, I always ask Lily because you know. But anyway, <laughs> Julie Chalfont says uh, she could help out if because both Denise and I will be traveling um, in October. But <clears throat> we have uh, a Zoom meeting on Monday, uh, which I'm still waiting for a link on it. So beat up Linda to get us a link. I haven't oh. seen a link for the meeting. Oh, okay. Yeah, she should. So um, at eleven o'clock, so we can work out responsibilities for who's, who's gonna do what. Library funding appeal, um, I had a Zoom meeting with, uh, that was organized by Candace um, Bradbury Carlin, uh, where 12 different um, library uh, leaders were in this meeting and we were talking about coming up with a unified approach to the governor, the, the Senate and the house leadership and what is, what is each community asking for? And um, so that's now buzzing like a beehive. We've got people excited, they're working. So hopefully that will uh, bear fruit. Uh, mix my metaphors, you know, I don't know. <laughs> anyway, and then the, um, the last thing is, uh, you may have read about in the paper, uh, the select board is looking to create some sort of ad hoc human rights, diversity, equity and inclusion committee. And we sort of wanna have a committee to create a committee. And uh, I, I forget which one of us is supposed to come up with language to try and do this on a social media and or other platforms to ask for people who are interested in trying to help us come up with what the town needs in that, in that front. So that's it. Wow, thanks, Tim. Hey, Tim, I just, I, you know, I just want to say, so I've got a question about the geothermal. So I know how I was researching just uh, federal geothermal. That's how I came up with it. Now, how did you, was that through Ben? Yes. Uh, okay. Yep. Ben Whale okay. from UMass and okay. um, Lauren Matt, Mattinson. Okay. Madison. So, uh, so, no, it's, I was just, I was just going to say, so, this is the value of CCI, it's a circuitous route. So we had the connection with Ben. I looked this up, you talked to Ben, 
And then all of a sudden we realize we're on the same page and working on it together. And this is this just illustrates the value of CCI. It does. Right there. So that's perfect. Thanks, Tim. I'm sorry, you were gonna say something else? No, no, no. I was uh, I was completely okay. okay, excellent. Okay, so I'll continue with that. Um, so with report community one stop, I was looking at that and the notification, I just looked it up. We probably won't hear until October. I mean, that's what it said on the website, unfortunately. Um, let's see, underutilized buildings, and that's the church that we hope to use for senior services. We've got our grant writer, Alice, and she'll be work, she's, she will be working on that. And that I believe is due in November. Um, so she's actually working on three different grants. That's a little bit more work, but then we've got two other ones. We're working on a community compact cabinet and that's an energy because at first we thought that we, we weren't gonna be able to do the geothermal with, um, with MA, I'm, I'm sorry, the geothermal with uh, the FERCOG. So we're looking at that one and I think that's pretty a pretty easy one. So she's gonna work on that one. So I think we can do two because that's a state and then we can do a federal. And then another one, and this is gonna be really helpful for town hall. It's an HR through human resources, it's personnel operations. At the same time, we're going to be addressing diversity, equity, inclusion within that grant. So hopefully that will fly. So all of these are gonna be happening around the same time and I don't know when we'll hear about them. Um, and then the other one that, that Tim said that we'll be working with the FERCOG and with uh, Jerry from GEI, that's the energy efficiency and renewal exchange, the geothermal exchange. So, and let's see. The last one is Complete Neighborhoods. I just had that meeting yesterday and it was great. We actually met in person at the FERCOG with all the different participants. And what's interesting is that, you know, we started out, you know, with wanting it for geothermal and then we said, no, 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 we'll do the landscape. I'm not sure whether that's gonna fly because really the whole point of this particular funding is addressing climate change through transportation and housing, having cluster community. So just fast forward, the um, uh, person in charge, Christine Modor, who is, who is great, she said, hey, would anyone want to tour the campus? I said, yeah, come to Deerfield. So she drove down to Deerfield afterwards and I gave her a little tour of the campus and told her what we wanted to do. I said, yeah, we've done presentations for Joe and Natalie and Jim McGovern. And I said, he was really impressed. He said, you know, people ask, to, you know, people ask for money. We need money for the town. But he said, you guys have a plan. And she said, oh my God, I'm impressed too. So, so that, was, that was a pretty good response. So we're going to work on how can we actually use this money. I hate to say it may not be for the landscape design, but we will be able to use it somehow. It's just still undetermined but we're gonna move forward with that. And our next meeting is October 17th. But she was really positive about it and said, wow, this is, this is amazing what you guys are doing. So, and you know, one other thing that she said, which was really interesting, and I don't recall the community I could find out, but she said that one community out in the, I think of the East or in the middle of the Eastern part of the state, they actually put a senior center in the high school. She said, it's unbelievable how, how great it's working out. So that's something, that's another interesting twist. So I don't know, you know, we can always think about that. But that is my report. And I don't think, does anybody have any questions on that? No? That's not a comment about how old the students are when they graduate, is it? <laughs> Well, some of them are. Carolyn? I forgot to mention that um, it appears the CPA will be 100% match this year uh, based on the additional money to the CPA. So that's good news for us. <laughs> Yay. No, that's great. Okay, let me think. I'm just looking. I think everyone has given a report. Um, before we... Let's see. Okay, we've yeah continuation conversation, a community outreach. We've got to continue thinking about that. 
Um, is there any other business that has not been anticipated? No. Well, I, I mean, what are we doing about the community outreach? I don't want to keep talking about it. And well, okay. Newsletter says we have to do things and stop talking about them. So. Well, okay. So, so people have to step up to the plate and say, "Hey, I'll be on the community outreach committee." And then you got to figure out what do we want to say and who are we going to go and talk to and what's the plan. I mean, we, last time we talked about, you know, you talked about maybe having an activity in town. You have different booths with different things. That's great. But I think we also determined that it's probably not going to happen this fall. So, you know, we can start the committee start and talking about what we want to do. We could always do something inside at Frontier, okay, in the gym, uh, in the gym or the cafeteria or one of those places that's big and have like a little fair. So, but this, you know, this is something that the community outreach group would determine. So, who wants to be on the committee? Don't all raise your hands at once. Um, I think Jim has already had a good start by saying he is going to, um, you know, try to write something up and circulate it. So rather than embarrass the committed group here that right. always shows up, let's let's take Jim's first step and all of us commit to looking at what he generates and try to get that ready for the next meeting. And then um what we have to do is is look at our media outlets that we need to get an article in the newspaper again. We need to get um, out on social media. Um, we need to we need to make a, a diagram of, who, of where are our outlets that we want to reach. Um, I maybe I I I don't mind going to the senior center and doing a little, you know, fifteen minute update. That's about what people are interested in. So what we need to do is commit to Jim's bulleted one page handout, and then we go on the road and we decide what networks, what, what groups that we feel comfortable with and or who we wanna reach out to each of us. And we commit, I mean, that's a fairly limited uh, yeah. commitment. And I think people would be okay to sign on to that. And we get everybody on the committees that and anybody else that's interested. Okay. Um, you know, somebody could do the women's club, um, you right. know, meeting, whatever. Okay. There's now, enough my, of us that can do that. Okay. My question is, and, and maybe it's a question for Jim. So, Jim, I mean, how would your bulleted information differ from what we already have on the postcard that we did? With the I postcard. have not seen the postcard. Um, well, okay, we got a postcard. We've got it, the whole CCI postcard. We right, can have more that, of them printed up. I mean, this is pretty right. much it in a nutshell. It's on it's the drive, the, right? It's like, why the reinvent camp? the wheel? And, you know, I also had, I also did all this information on a sheet of paper that we handed out at the last town meeting and there are copies of town hall. So, I mean, unless you think that we need additional information, we can use that. <laughs> I think we can update it though, Denise. How much so, updating does it? I don't know what needs new. I mean, you can take a look at an updated Annalee and then Tim. It just seems to me that for the town meeting coming up, we really, really need a very clear push for the library that's just mm -hmm. really focused on the library. Yeah. Okay. Tim and then Jim. Um, yeah, I was just going to say one of the things that, one of the things that's going to, create problems for CCI is if a perception grows that there's this group of 20 people that are all talking about spending money and um, people don't understand that there's the, the component of if we get federal, if we get state, you know, if we get outside money from things, we can do X. And so we need to find a way to communicate that in a non-threatening way right. saying, you know, we have a lot of plans that we're working on and many of them require outside resources from the federal and state government. Um, and because there are people out there that are trying to pit the senior center, community center against the library. And, you know, my taxes are gonna go up um, when we, we're gonna build a sewer plant that we're, you know, basically fees from the users pay for it. So your taxes aren't gonna go up, um, you know, so that's a component that I, I don't know how to do it, but I, I think we, our literature needs to address it. 
You know, Tim, thank you. I think that's a really good point. Anna Lee, you also made a really good point. And so perhaps we should think about addressing this after the special town meeting. So we're not we're not muddying the waters. And Jim, you had you had your hand up. So I had two two questions. First of all, is the postcard um, is that about the town campus project, mm -hmm. or is it about what the CCI does? Um, it's both. It's okay. both. It, it basically says Deerfield's CCI unites more than 20 boards to design a vibrant downtown that links our civic buildings to community services while breathing new life into our architectural treasures. It has our vision, our mission, housing, right. senior community center, blah, 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 shared energy, efficiency, efficient infrastructure zoning to encourage development structures designed for accessibility so blah 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 and it is I, on a shared drive i put the link to the um there's a community outreach folder that has um two folders collateral and legislative campus campaign the postcard is under collateral so the link i just put in the chat will take you to community outreach great thanks lily you're welcome. All right, because what I was thinking of was specifically a sheet about the town campus project and what it means and trying to explain that it is not buckets in a well that we can do these things with that building one is not going to take away from doing the other mm -hmm. and also right. discuss funding sources. Okay. Um, uh, I like think I said, that would I'll, be a, I'll come a up with a draft addition. probably next week and, and circulate it. Mm -hmm. uh, but my second thing was, um, I don't remember if it was, uh, I believe it was Ms. Wolfkill said, um, you know, that we need a push about the library. Well, the library is doing that. <laughs> they got that, they got that nailed down. Don't worry about that. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Great. Thanks, Jim. Carolyn? I just, I think one of the things we have, we have so many balls in the air right now that will be determined in the next month. You know, we have grants that um, we'll find out of community for one stop. We'll find out, you know, if the House and the Democrats um, are able to hold the House and the Senate, or bo hopefully both. But, you know, the we know Jim McGovern is going to help us if, you know, and that will be the first week in November. So then we'll know what we have to, we have to scramble at that point. Um, hopefully you guys will have some more information on geothermal. Um, and you know, so we can write a proposal for that if that happens. And so I think we need to sort of let the library do their business because we should have a backup plan. If the library isn't successful, we still do need library renovations and we still need some kind of addition. So then again, we need to um, adjust our plans. So. I think that's a good, a really good thing for us to, um, you know, just not hold back on that outreach and then come forward when we have a little bit more information. Sounds good. Have your hand up. Are you talking to me? Yeah, you've got your hand up. You talking to me? Yeah. Um, <laughs> so I just wanted to um, to understand while we're here and uh, that the money that's a that the money that's currently available for the 1888 building. My understanding is, and I wasn't on the select board, but somebody mentioned this, that the second tranche of opera money, which is $750,000, was decided that that money would go towards the 1888 building. Is that correct or is that not correct? Yes, we, it was a consensus. It was a consensus. Okay. Was it ever voted? I'm just no. trying. Okay. Then, no, we it's a 400, then we have a $400,000 grant from somewhere. Um, does yeah, well, anybody remember where this four hundred thousand dollars? The community one stop is as long as we get that four hundred. Okay, right. So that would be for that building. I thought you were doing CPA money too. Wait, well, we yeah. are. I'm just trying to build up yeah. the pot. Okay. Okay. So the CPA has already dedicated forty seven, uh, four hundred seventy five thousand for design and, you know, okay. testing, etc. Okay. Trevor. Yeah, Trevor. Just you know, we keep. We're on this train of like that building's going to be our town hall. I'm really still nervous. Like that space is not big enough. Um, we're just like moving from a small building to another small building. And I, I mean, I'm sure there'll be a feasibility study. We need storage. We need multiple offices. We need 
rooms to do meetings right. in. I'm really, really nervous okay. about that side. Yeah, yeah. so I want to start another whole thing. Yeah, no, so I'm just to go back to the money thing. Yep. Okay. So then so we've got 475,000. We got a potential another 400,000. We got $750,000 of ARPA money, which we may or may not spend on that building. Um, and then we've got, you know, 1.5 million in undesignated CPA funds that could be spent on that building, whether it becomes town offices or it becomes mm -hmm. something else. We all agreed early on that that building is worthy of saving for some purpose. And we have a church next door, which could solve a lot of the needs of the, the, the town offices. You, you know, you go next door, you have your select board meetings, you, you have your voting there, you have all kinds of stuff there. So that building we've sort of agreed should be saved too. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, one of the reasons why in other meetings I keep pushing, let's fix the church because we can temporarily house a senior center there. We can find other revenue generating uses for that building, or we can use it as the, the adjunct town hall to solve the, the concerns you have, Trevor, mm -hmm. legitimate concerns about the size of the building. Yeah. Um, you know, so those are the two things that can happen the quickest. And, and you know, some of these other things, you know, right. we've got questions about whether housing can go in this campus for various reasons, you know. So, um, so there are two things that I think this letter can do is that there's mm -hmm. a lot of balls in the air and some of these things might happen and some of them might not. And a lot of it depends on where is the money coming from. And we're not going to do anything crazy. No. You know, no, I, this, is, I, this is through grants. Right. The as much is, as possible. The thing is that everyone needs to keep an open mind on what we're doing. Nothing is set in stone. Just keep open to it. And we're going to figure it out as we go along, as we get money. But I right. think everyone should keep throwing out ideas because, you know, we've we've got our our campus building committee, you know, that we're, we're, you know, we've been working on that. Um, I think it was very successful when we met with the library. Jim, don't you think so? Oh, very much. I think, I think it was very successful and it, it answered some questions that Candace had, that we all had. So I think, you know, the key is keep an open mind and continued communication. Carolyn, and then- I just, I just wanna say that, for all of my years of working and doing stuff, it, it really projects are in half decades and full decades. And you really haven't invested in anything unless you've put a decade of work into it. And I know that sounds terrible, but honestly, when you think about it, it, it'll be it, it's it's really you no, know, it's the persistence. If you're persistent, it, it happens. And yeah. so you just have to say, we're gonna stick together and keep chugging and it's the persistence that will pay off and i i'm one that feels like this is a half decade to a full decade to see it visualized but it doesn't matter and and i will say the housing committee we've been working on this lily and i have been working on this since the last century and we are not giving up and we are not handing it off to somebody so that the third or fourth time here it fails we are going to see it happen. We don't know where it's going to happen. We don't even know what it's going to look like yet. But guess what? We're going to have senior housing here. And if Lily and I can work on this since the last century, the rest of you can hang in here to make this happen for the, you know, <laughs> come on. We do have a good group of people here. I can't. We've, yeah. we've got a lot of momentum happening <laughs> right now. And you know, I'm I'm sensing a group hug right now, but you know, um, yes. uh, we can't give up, guys. We can't give up. Come on. Play, uh... Jim shaking his head. Wait okay. a minute. Okay. <laughs> so Jim I'm is like up. figuring this out. Let's okay. let's set, let's set our next meeting. Next meeting, um, which I can't do until I'm back from my trip, which will be October 10th. Um, so I can certainly meet. Uh. October 12th. Well, does it make sense when oh, you said we're not going to find some stuff out till November or mm -hmm. October? I, I don't I don't know, Lily. You know, it's pretty loose. It said, you know, it's interesting is when I when I spoke with um Christine Medora from Complete Neighborhoods, I told her about community one stop and she said, Oh, I think they've they've already decided that, but I don't know it. I said, hey, do you have any inside track? She said, no, but so it may be sooner rather than later. And uh, Casey's the point person on that. So who knows? 
but you know, I guess the reason I bring it up is that maybe if we make it like October 20th that's fine an opportunity that will have some answers yeah. when is the special town meeting 24th oh 24th do we want to do it a little sooner than I wonder maybe the uh, um Casey's going to need you know, she's coming back from a week's vacation, so she'll be in bliss for like a half a day, and then yeah, maybe. everything's going to hit. And then we're, you know, we have to find Jennifer's replacement, so that she's going to be busy this week, kind of. Yeah, it's going to hit this kind of stuff, So maybe like the thirteenth. Yeah, thirteenth is good. We can give up senior housing that night. I'm I'm okay with that. Okay, so thirteenth. Right. Okay. And then Jim, you, before that, okay, so Jim, you're gonna work on that. You're gonna send that out. So by the 13th, we can all do yeah. final agreement on that. Okay. All is, right. it, is it at 6.30? 6.30, yep. Yep. CCI, okay. okay. October 13th, 6.30. I will send that out tomorrow. Okay. Let's see. Alert. Let me see two days. Oh man. One day. Okay, cool. Okay, so that's October 13th at 6 30. Okay, great. Thursday, October 13th. Yep. So that gives you a couple of days to get back and turn into a human. Oh, I, I, I could, I'll, I'll be ready to roll the next day I get back. <laughs> yeah coming back isn't so bad i've done that before i've come back you know from a trip and gone to work the next day i figured out. it's all good work it out good okay so do i hear a motion i, I will make a motion for the select board to um adjourn i'll second that second. motion okay all, all those right. in favor i right, trevor okay. mcdaniel I do i hear a motion for right, Carolyn, now. to adjourn I make that motion. I second that. Everyone in favor? Aye, Lily Dwight. Aye. Thank Aye. you, everyone. Great meeting. Thanks for all the work. Thank you all.